I do like the band so far from Cloud9. Kogma, definitely one of the top 80 carries everyone's fighting over. And Braum is Gleeb's favorite yeah. support. His absolute favorite. It looks like Bjergsen won't even get the chance to go back to Twisted Fate. As they make that the last band. All mid bands for TSM here. I guess you count Lulu as the top lane now, though. Right. A little flex band. One more. Medios banned out in the jungle. Yes, it will be. The Rangar gets kicked out. Okay, so you you target him with that man, but Lee Sin is still up. So it looks like they're gonna take Lee Sin for TSM here. Amazing also loves this champion. Um, and I think that would leave Medios to go back to Nunu then. So if, if TSM pick Lee here, they may be trying to put uh, Medios on that Nunu intentionally. Yeah, they should. Try and take advantage of it. Yesterday they had the chance and he actually picked Evelyn which was one of his first games on Evelyn. He has not had a lot of plays on it within the LCS. We know these guys play a whole bunch of stuff outside of it, and more than not, we think he's gonna pick the Lee, starts to hover as well. They're looking at Hai's Yasuo. We saw that come out for the first time just recently, and he played outstanding on that. Just them, though. They're yep. getting the picks that they want uh, so far here. Lee and Gragas combo. They don't want to leave very Leo color coded. Medios, not only because Midos had such, so much success with him earlier, but also combos very well with Yasuo. The early game combo between those two is very effective, and then they can even make it work late. Iris played quite a strong Gragas, as we were saying before, so definitely something to be reckoned with in the top lane. We saw balls going on to Rise. He has that option again. That pickup would call out for a bit of the late game play and a very good split push team of Ayasu and Rise to do whatever you want with if they can really get control of the map. A lot of options here as both teams have left up some high priority stuff. With we see 80 carry bands coming out as for the Kogma, so might be a tryst for Turtle. That's what they prioritized last time. And they said they got everything they wanted. Yep. So round two here. Looks like they will just go back to the same strategy. That they used last time. Tristana, by the way, has not only been showing uh, her late game prowess, a lot of these games, bullying early. But she's not really, a, a, the consensus among the 80 players right now, she's not really supposed to um, be able to bully that hard early. We'll see if uh, Turtle can actually pull that off against Lucian. A little smirk on Sneaky's face. Sneaky indeed. I saw some Varus over an OGM played by Death, but not to the greatest extent. We're going to see the switch around, balls back onto Mundo, where he can be a menace. And Medios is going to take a lease. She actually goes fifth pick blue side all the way through. So he doesn't opt for the Nunu once again. Right. And uh, also, Medios has been uh, also a fan of the offensive builds for Elise lately yeah. with all the changes in 4.11, so it'll probably go a similar build to Dexter this time around. But yeah, the Mundo as well by Cloud9 being picked up into the percentage damage of Gargas and the health cutting uh, of Tristana here. So TSM already have some pretty good answers. So see if Mundo can actually get time to scale up though, because Mundo is a pretty easy dive early on, and Lee Sin is one of the best junglers at making that happen. So Cloud9 are going to know, right. if especially it's a one versus one situation, that Mundo will be a target for TSM early. Maybe they can use that, leverage it to their uh, advantage, and go for some stuff on the bottom side of the map, like Dragon, yeah. as we've seen earlier today. Syndra pickup coming in for Bjergsen. Definitely kind of a tell that he wants to dominate his lane. We can say that for him, but we see other players play it, and they play it for safety to, yeah, win their lane, but they come out at even CS. It's different. He'll put a different play style on it, and we'll be looking for that. Let's see where the fan vote stands over at LOLesports.com. Currently, TSM, TSM leads Cloud9 with a 56% of the vote. That's going to change. Yeah, that's not written in stone, so keep updating your vote by tweeting either hashtag C9win or TSMwin. And make sure to add in the at LOL Esports or else we won't be able to find it. See what happens. We're going to get back into Locked In for the champion select. Team Solo Mid really wants to get this win, but hell, so does Cloud9. Looking at the brackets right now with LMQ and CLG so far near the top. Dignitas pulling out, or not able to pull out a win for themselves, I should say there. So having a little bit of a crutch coming in on week eight. A lot of the teams will 
if they lose games now, I feel like it's going to be a slump that sticks. EG's feeling that already. They stopped the streak a bit for themselves, but it's going to be very hard if you start finding that you can't correct your, your wrong situations and your wrongdoings here in the later part of the split. Every team's been playing with each other for a long time now. You get situations like Glebe coming to get together better with Team Solo Mid. Even Cloud9 had to go through a bit of that turmoil when High was out for his situation. Now they're back in action, and we're seeing that top-tier play come from these teams. Yeah, they have been looking much better recently. And uh, Glebe finding his way into the LCS. A lot of members, actually, from that right. um, team actually all Kind of like brother blood. There. The only ones left out, Bishu and Yazuki. Yeah. Left on the sidelines to cheer on, cheer on their brethren. It's funny how a lot of these uh, challenger teams, even if the really good challenger teams get kicked out and they don't make it into the LCS, they break up and some of the players still right. find their way in because all of the LCS teams, with it being this close, they're very willing to make roster swaps if they see some young talent in the challenger league. Yeah. And it's interesting, too, because once you get those guys, you don't know if they've actually, they're capped out, if you're seeing their skill, or if being with your team with that coordination of better leadership is going to make them even better. Look what Lemonation has done to AD carries as he goes through the league. How many have become top-tier AD carries? And that's what they're going to get out of these challenger guys. Look what Altec's doing now that he has a team that he can play with, putting up double digits almost every single game. Yeah, it definitely does take some time. Once you pick someone with raw mechanical abilities from mm -hmm. the challenger league, uh, to bring them in and uh, verse them in this LCS strategy that is constantly changing. It's a bit different. We don't hear the players kind of say too much that the fans get to them. They always say the fans will be kind of the drive they use to keep going. And they know they're behind them cheering with the signs. Usually they won't tell you that, you know, that makes me nervous. This is my crutch. Lately we've had more teams on the analyst desk kind of telling us, this is, you know, the reason we're making this mistake. Link recently kind of admitting that CLG has having problems. They've identified them, but they're not able to correct. That doesn't put your team on the wayside for everybody else to beat. That's good information. Now they're going to have to work on that. And come, yeah, come and that's not anything unique, new, too. No team in the North American L LCS right now is content with how they're playing. Right. Everybody has problems. That's not saying... Like, CLG is literally the number one team right now. Yeah. And they're like, yes, we have all these problems, and we don't really know how to fix them. As long as they keep winning games, though, then that's good. But everybody's eyes are pretty much turned towards the world stage now. It's not oh, just yeah. enough to top North America. And so that's why all of these teams, even everybody who is so high up and tied up for these first and second place spots, all are all constantly looking to improve. Well, let's see as they move on to the rift, Cloud9 is going to try their best to take a win off a of team solo mid here, and vice versa. Pretty much standard starts for the lanes coming out. Balls goes for the Doran shield as he just needs to keep himself not too squishy in that top lane. Amazing and Dyrus would be a pretty good gank if they can get there before six onto a, a Mundo. Yep, we will keep our eyes on that. All right, defensive ward so far. This time around, no sweeper for Cloud9, so they'll probably not go mm. for an invade. They're one of the teams that at pretty much every time they decide to go for an invade, either Meteos or Lemon will start with that sweeper, so it's kind of a tip-off. And you can tell if they are planning some invades. This one is just going to be a reaction, though, for Cloud9, as TSM go for the blue side. Oh. What a sweet little swoop back into their jungle, but they know they'll be walking over a ward. We have the lane swap board being placed out as well. The ping comes down from Cloud9 that TSM is Whoa. here. Throw it! What? Holy! That just happened. Balls is going to be going down on this one. He's saving all of the summoners that he has. There's no reason to use one. Very fortunate for TSM there. Uh, Gold for First Blood was boosted up, so that is... <laughs> I'm not sure how amazing missed out on that. That is significant now. <laughs> Unfortunate. Eh, I mean... Yeah, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't right. add any extra gold, <laughs> and it's really a chump change if you get, like, the fourth assist <laughs> little split on the tiny... Oh, you dropped a quarter? Let me yeah. get that. There you go. So 500 gold, that'll help really spread out across the lanes, but that's a pink ward already in the bottom lane. That's huge Ooh, for Wild Turtle and Glebe here. Medios. Still getting himself into a tight situation there and getting what he wants out of it, though. Let's see if they can actually pull off a three buff here for Cloud9. Because, yeah, they lost out on first blood. Um, but if Meteos is bold enough to go check his blue side, then they might be able to stop Amazing. Um, well, he should go, yeah. Looks like he's not 
that bold though because it'd be so dangerous for Cloud9, for Medios to go over to his blue side. He knows TSM invaded that side. They had complete vision control of right. it. He has no idea if, to, yep. if, if Amazing Star there anyway. So Medios going with the high percentage, safer uh, route here and just sticking to his own side, what he knows is safe. One of these days, they're going to go high risk and somebody's just going to stick them. I'm not going to get away with it. <laughs> well, I think the biggest risk here is actually Amazing can hit level 3 on cloud Nine's side of the jungle, and that would put him in position for an early Mundo kill. Uh, Dyrus bullying already with that Gragas, easily controlling that top lane in the one versus one. Uh, Balls is doing a good job of CSing, though, so even though he's backing off and playing safe, keeping up there in CS. Amazing decides to go mid instead. A little bit early for that action top. Yeah, thinking he'll be calling counter gank. Nice grab coming out of the brush. Lemonation with a bit of brush control there. But easily played with the black shield. So Glebe and Wild Turtle, not the ones to initiate the aggression in this lane, as it should be. He's trying to get Tristana built up, but Sneaky not putting the pressure on either as they try to get something out of Medios here in the bottom lane. Yeah, they ping, they ping out the ward there for Medios to back off. Uh, so he'll probably just go back to farming as Bjergsen is recalling in mid as well. This is a tense situation up top. We were looking for it early, and TSM does not disappoint. He still has the flash. Remember that. If they don't hit the Sonic Wave, this is going to be big, Ooh. bad news. But they get everything they want. Dyrus gets out. Fairly simple. No I summoners used on both sides again. I actually expected Cloud9 to look for that, but... Right, yeah, kind of called TSM, they go with the uh, initial plan there, and it works out very well for them. First blood reward. And Balls, thankfully for Cloud9, doesn't lose out on too many CS. Missed about half a wave there while he was dead. But immediately teleporting back. Dyrus is going to have that teleport advantage now. Because the lane was shoved up, he doesn't need to teleport back to lane. <laughs> Some it's a good farm. Chaps for the, for the CSing there. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. He's actually a little bit behind, but it's expected with explosive shot. Sneaky staying in range for the experience, but Ooh. not to give himself away. Yeah, it's rough. The early CSing with explosive shot sometimes puts you off. But yeah, Turtle, this is again the second game he went back to this Tristana. TSM really mm -hmm. putting a lot of value on this. This is really the third team that's done that. LMQ and Complexity were the first two, and those are really the two Tristana main teams um, that have really had a lot of success with the champion. TSM, not so much yet. But starting off with First Blood, that's definitely going to help him out. Yeah, he's loving that Triss now. Actually, he focused a little bit on Jinx, Caitlyn, and Lucian when we saw a lot more of the 80 carries of Kog'Maw and those coming out. But he does stick with the Justana lately. We've been seeing a very aggressive play from Vasily, Double Lift, and Turtle of the likes on that champion. 800 gold lead by TSM with slow, slow movements around the map. They've been huh. able to gain, gain a little bit of gold. It'll allow for a very nice objective fight when they want it. Thought he was going to go for the lane gank there, but Amazing makes his way through a lot of wards. They're very close to six. I think it might be after this ward. So the reason that a lot of people place pink wards so far in their own jungle this early on is because those are very easy to defend. And you can see, even right. though Amazing found it, way too dangerous for him to try and kill that ward this early on. Ooh, point blank dodge from Bjergsen. And High is not six yet. Nope, he's only even got he two got spheres. Looking for another one. That flow was down. He wouldn't not be grabbing the shield up. But Bjergsen waits. Very patient play from him, knowing he's got a little bit of the upper hand here. 46 to 41, so he's not completely punishing his lane as we kind of called out to watch for, but there's no real need to play Man. it safe and get the win later. See, Amazing's doing a lot of walking, but he's not killing jungle camps on the way, whereas Meteos is hard yeah. farming this jungle. CS. And right. Meteos has been able to complete his Spirit Stone very early to help him sustain in his hard farming path. So he's coming out uh, much stronger here in the mid game than Amazing, even though uh, Amazing with that Lee Sin making the strong look top and getting that gank down. Uh, Medios is keeping right up there <laughs> with the straight up farm. I love the gang from Amazing walking through Tribush. Balls hit six and he says, forget about it. I'll just go down. 
Yeah, it's. I mean, that's a gank you can still pull off. Too. Yeah, yeah. Because Mundo, when he pops his ulti, it actually does damage initially, taking him lower. So right. if you have an execute, cost of health. If you have an execute with you, uh, it can actually be to your benefit to go for it. However, no ignite means that that can easily get out of hand, and you can make a pretty big blunder up there, and it is make you look very bad if you're not able to finish him off. Also, something we'll watch for later. Bjergsen is the only one with that, that Ignite and Exhaust from Gleeve for Yasuo, so the fight could become yeah. quite chaotic. Mid lane, amazing trying to get some pressure on. He is five still to the six over on the side of Meteos. Not that there's a huge pull and damage there, but he does get his Dragon's Kick finally. Yeah. And pretty much the thing keeping him in the game. Whoa, going for the blue steel here, second time around. No deep wards, but it looks like he will get it. Now, Medio, since his first blue was actually the TSM blue, he may very well go for that answer and steal as well. Preemptive ward from Balls. He placed that ward, by the way, last time he used his ulti. But I don't know if there's enough to run. Still cornered. No time. Oh, the safeguard dodging the initial attack of the briefcase. There's no slow. He's trying to play a ring around the turret. I don't know if it's going to work. Both of them have the gap closers, or rather dashes, to get out of the situation of danger. Yeah. And even though everybody expected this focus top, um, the first time around, Cloud9 were too low level to answer with the dragon. This time, they do get it. However, TSM, very aware of the trade, take down the turret. So, overall, pretty big win for TSM with this yep. focus up top. They've been able to pull this off much more effectively than the last game. Very nicely done. A lot of focus, again, put on this Gragas for Dyrus. We'll have to see if he can come out big in the late game. Looks like he is going to start with a bit of an ability power build, but we saw Gragas is yesterday kind of throwing the tank in early and some going for the full AP. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan of the Rod of Ages into Lichbane, but mm. we'll see what Dyrus opts with. He's been going a little bit more tanky than that. I think Morello Namakon was the second one last time. Right. Both AD carries, speaking of itemization, are going to go for early Infinity Edges. Um, and er and that will be that will mean, when they complete those items, it will actually be Lucian who's a bit stronger. Um, because the flat da attack damage from yeah. the Infinity Edge parts actually help him out a lot. Being able to throw out all those spells. Because his spells, yeah, scale with attack damage. Whereas Trist, she's really looking for the late game. She has that mid-game sort of trough. And she has to wade her way through. And seeing Wild Turtle, I think, might be the first one, uh, if, whether it was a Blade of the Rune King or not. But we usually we see the Tristana going the static shiv first. Quick little burst in lane. You're pushing anyways, yeah. and you control that. A lot of people liking that one. Uh, static shiv definitely does help you get yeah. through that little mid-game dip. Whew. See how it works out here, though. Sneaky doing a good job harassing with his. Yeah, nice piercing lights right through. It always feels good as a Lucian when you can catch both the support and the AD carry kind of waltzing around each other in a double piercing light. He was trying to force a Sinky, kind of giving it away here with the positioning. Getting really far up there. Should be a tell for TSM, and they start playing defensively, yeah. Look at that. Sneaky puts the early Ardent Blaze on. If you were to calling, they'd be in range for the Repel and Meteos. Trying to plan everything as it comes. They're still going to go for it, though, as Meteos has not been seen yet. That ward was uh, just in the Tribars, though. Yeah, good warding from TSM and good defensive play from the bottom lane. Wasting a lot of Meteos time. More to the top, though. Look at Amazing and Dyrus. They're being buddies here as they go through the jungle. Wild Turtle and Gleeve. Grabbing what they can as the lane is a little uh -oh. too pushed for them. And this is going to be a full roll from Team Solo Mid. The flash onto high. He tries to go in for the initiation. It actually looked like he ulted, but that was Dyrus serving him up for death. He gets out alive. Now they've got him cornered, but high took so much damage in that dive that it's Woo. they don't even get anything out of it. I mean, it looked cool. He might have missed <laughs> a wind wall. I didn't see a wind wall come out during that exchange. He was getting thrown around too much. He thought he actually had the initiation with his last Q. He's going to be forced to back. Ball's now called down from the top. He's going to try to guard this mid lane, but they just waltz right up to it. TSM gaining a little bit of map pressure here all around. I mean, the top focus for TSM is huge for them so far. Executed very well so far. Answer back. Bottom lane's been trying to answer back, but it's been up to just Sneaky and Lemon because Meteos cannot find a way in. Mm -hmm. I think what they would really want to do if they're trying to force this that bad would have to go for a lantern gank 
TSM have been keeping up in their wards too much. For any other gank. Whoa! Kai just got back to lane after blowing his flash, and he goes directly to the turret. He's gonna get out alive on that burn! Oh my! Amazing! Eats turret shots! And goes down. Oh my. You too uh, many there. Bold play from high there. You, you <laughs> gotta give him the credit for uh, the calculations. <laughs> Knowing that he was gonna get out alive. Ooh, but low I mana. think he just kind of went for what was in front of him. That could have been a possible kill there. Meteos himself as well going for that spectral build. There's damage to come out of that. Let's watch this wall yeah, more time. It seems like a wall early. pretty big misstep here, but High goes right for it. Oh, even one with more sphere and he would have been done. Yeah, even with that ulti, an amazing going in for the execute. Not able to pull him down. Definitely something to give Cloud9 a little bit of growing room in this game. They're still down by a thousand gold, but starting to get a little gold into those lanes they need it. Man, that the change to Yasuo where he gets full flow after using his ult was really big. And that pretty much single-handedly <laughs> saved his life right there. So well played by High. Maybe a little luck does have to do with it. Yesterday he got what four crits maybe in a row. Oh yeah. Pova. Whatever that was. Mid. So Hi, Yasuo is a good champion for High. He's got he definitely has luck on his side. Definitely playing in his favor. He's he's kind of weathered the, the beginning part. He said Bjergsen loves to kill him in lane. He loves to go hard, so he's gotten away from that. He's down by about 16 CS. That's better than dying. All being told, though, C9 are only down 1,000 gold. Mm -hmm. Could be made up yeah, by the next dragon. Old. We got 40-odd 40, 40 seconds left on it. And Balls is starting to get tanky. Yeah. Not near where they want him to. Gragas definitely still will have the bigger impact Getting during stats the right now too. Fight if they find themselves in that situation. So ward control around that dragon will be the most important mm -hmm. factor. Looks like Dyrus has just finished that Rod of Ages. Medios going for the Haunting Guys build. We just heard that from Dexter to be the second item to kind of make up for the loss of health and added penetration for not going boots right away. TSM grabs mid, opens up C9's portion of the map a little bit more, denying that mid lane vision from the turret. So they're moving quite nicely. Even with vision here, they're not even worried about clearing it out. They've Overall, map be position. able to get it. Ab yeah. Absolutely. Allowing them to get that. Hey, up top. Easy. Nice increase in gold here for TSM. Yeah, that was this fast. Is, that this was is fast. really the, this is actually the mid game spike that they would like to work with to ensure that they can protect Wild Turtle. Uh, if they can keep him CSing evenly for the next 10 minutes, then it will be a pretty big win for TSM. Medios again to the bottom lane. Spent quite a bit of time walking around here. They should be able to at least get the turret or work on this, but it was just to clear it. So very nice preemptive play from Amazing to be in place, but does he leave a little too early? Medios no. finally they all finds his way into bottom. <laughs> Let's see if they can make anything happen, because it will be three on three. So oh, it will be rough. Yeah, he's coming back. The thing is, the jungler that makes the first move in this situation will probably be um, the one that loses out the most. Oh. If Amazing goes in first, it's very easy for Minios to hit him with a cocoon. And uh, Elise is, definitely has a huge advantage um, when she gets the initiative in a fight. They don't make the... The call to stay though. So again, oh. Meteos focus bottom just gets it's gotta be frustrating. avoided it's by TSM. Has to be frustrating. Now they see them all running down mid lane and he's just leaving bottom. A lot of cat and mouse being played here as Cloud9 chasing, trying to find oh. where that mouse is. They're mid lane right now, trying to take down second tier inhibitor. Dyrus still providing trouble to balls in the top lane and a level up there so he can be quite a menace. See Sneaky doing what he can with two pieces of an Infinity Edge in the bottom lane. This is dangerous though. TSM can go for a dive even. They're gonna get the turret at least. See if they can pick off any kills. Sinister has a very long range stun that could be followed up by a Morgana Binding. One of those situations of, can we do this? May not have enough as much damage as he usually would now. It's taking Sneaky a it. long time to take this down, so he is definitely sticking with it. We'll see how TSM reacts. It doesn't look like they're going to stop Cloud9 from moving up too much. They're just going to take whatever they need and get back to lane. Free farm coming in for Wild Turtle in the bottom lane. He's 30 down from that, but he's already Infinity Edge finished. 
Yep, he's got the Infinity Edge. So from now on, the, the trough goes right back the other direction. He's going to start climbing up in power. As soon as he can start adding in the crit and its attack speed, uh, Wild Turtle will get very strong, and he'll be able to take down balls too. Yeah. Uh, even though Mundo scales very well into being a late-game tank, he's built magic resistance going against mm -hmm. Dyrus, so he doesn't have a lot of armor. And Turtle will be able to uh, use that explosive shot active right. to cut through his ultimate. So Cloud9 definitely feeling the pressure right now. Look at Gleeb coming in here as well. Loving to pull out the ability power on his champions when he can help the team do damage. He's already got a Seeker's Arm Guard to start staying safe. Doesn't want to get canceled out by Hive when he's trying to make some Soul Shackle plays. Doesn't really help if you're dead. No, sir. All right. so. Cloud9, they uh, switch high down to the bottom lane to split push now that there are no turrets. And yeah, these a, are the options we were talking about. He gets about. one wave pushing their way, but this force from TSM is just draws way too much pressure around Baron. They've got so much ward coverage over the Baron. Uh, Cloud9 can't really leave this mid lane area, so they swing right back. Oh, it's very scary when you have to enter your lane through that Wraith Balls is actually chasing Dyrus right now. Bull is him out. Very nicely played. This means a different matchup here for Dyrus. He was bullying out the Renekton last time we saw this. Now he's going to be bullied out by the Mundo on Gragas. Three pink wards down around Baron coming in for Team Solo mid. I think they want coverage there. Yeah, I think they... Uh, <laughs> They definitely don't want to give up this mid to 300. That would open gold. up a lot of room for C9. They're going to take this opportunity to clear out the double pink wards, though. Pretty big win for Cloud9, getting that vision back around Baron. Because even though it's early, this TSM squad is very, very strong at taking down uh, early Barons if they're left yeah. alone. It looks like, by the way, Balls with this build here um, might be looking to pick up a Thorn Mail early against Tristana, because if Trist goes Infinity Edge into Phantom Dancer, as a lot of them do, without getting some lifesteal in there, a early Warmogs plus Thornmail is actually an effective way to tank her. The boss can just run into the middle of the team fight. Right now, he seems pretty safe if he takes the Cinder all and get himself in the middle. Balls will be able to teleport, pretty much keep everyone alive, absorbing everything. Or so he hopes. Dragon in 45 seconds. TSM getting all their waves pushed right now. But like we said, Cloud9 kind of working that double split push that they have a chance to do. And make sure they have the map pressure. Yeah, and once we do get Cloud9 to that next team fight, if we do see something at this next Dragon, Remember, it is going to be a lot up to High to create his own knockups because Thresh is hard pressed uh, to land those for him. Yeah. The flay is much easier than the hook to land, but that would mean Lemon would have to get into close quarters, into a dangerous spot. So maybe Lemon will be able to land a uh, strong hook, though, to start it off. Other than that, High will be working with his own Q charges. Elimination is not afraid to make plays, mainly if cast your mind back, as D-Man would say, to any dragon fight, flash oh, plays. There's one. How about a starting hook? Meteos. No Yasuo in the area. Just an extra pull he wasn't expecting from Lemonation. Dodges out in the cocoon. Both teleports are up, by the way. Again, okay. throwing out a hook to keep the pressure off. Good play. Cloud9 with their map control still continues to play strong, but that gold lead Closing. Hey, uh, Dexter was talking about how quickly Elise can take these mid-game dragons if yep. uh, she goes this build. That's right. With the uh, Wraith item. No. Wow, they're still keeping Sneaky split pushing while cornering TSM here. Sneaky's not recalling at all. They're giving up inhibitor turret for a side lane split push. Oh, they're going to have to stop the backs and hope to trade inhibitor turrets. But they're also going to get top turret here for TSM. This Whoa, is absolutely dangerous crazy. Play here. They've just pretty much swapped spots, allowed TSM in the base, and then they're going to be able to walk out here. We're going to get almost. It's going to take them a down. long time to get this. Very much so. I just played a dangerous game, trying to stop the recall. Everything used out. One, two, three from binding? Gleeb. Dodges that. Also dodged the binding from his own flash, and that's TSM trying to regroup and kite the fight. Ball slowing down Dyrus and really just trying to harass them. How's that inhibitor doing? Stop. Half-life right now in the picture-in-picture. 
Sneaky, slowly getting cornered, though. Oh, he's not going to be able to get out of this one. He's just going to have to commit, finish the inhibitor. Million effort. No, yeah, he uses oh, relentless commit. pursuit. One more. Doing what he can. Rest in peace, Sneaky. Rest in peace. Rest in pieces. Cloud Nine, they try and draw to the other side of the map, but it's way too early. This Baron, 22 minutes is fairly early on to do a Baron. Without your AD carry, it's very rough. Elise with damage is definitely a good attempt at it, and Mundo as well, percentage health damage, but rough go there as TSM are very well aware of what the answer would be. So in the end, yeah. trading inhibitor turret and inhibitor, bottom for mid. The actual bottom one is a little bit more effective that helps. since it's furthest away from Baron. So sneaky little maneuver from Cloud9. It costs them Sneaky's life. <laughs> However, they get the better inhibitor down. See if they'll add that pressure over to Baron now. Definitely need a few more wards for themselves. They've got a semi-deep pink ward that would be cleared out quite quickly. But they need to be getting the ones that TSM has laid and is more than ready to defend once they get to Dragon. Rather, Baron on the top side of the map. Needlessly large rod picked up by Dyrus. He's looking to go Zanya's, but avoids that. Quickly picked out as we've seen. Yeah, that, that's that what I was in. looking at. The yep. uh, the second item void staff for Bjergsen makes me think he's going to want to put a lot of damage into Mundo, the front line here. See if he can uh, throw some balls on balls because he's really the only one with magic resistance worth cutting through. Ballception. <laughs> Get it going. 13s, 12s, and 10 is the lot of TSM and Dyrus. 14. On the outside. He is actually the highest in the game at this point. So looks like he's going to keep himself occupied in the bottom lane. Get this finally pushed out. Like you're saying, Kobe, it becomes a very hard inhibitor to be controlling the super minions if that Baron is what's on the mind of everyone. It's definitely on the mind of Cloud9. Look at the influx of wards purchased by Cloud9. Everybody with pink wards, green wards, switching over to sweepers now. They actually only have three, but Cloud9 definitely shifting their focus very heavily towards Vision now. This is the uh, time where you can't let up around Baron. Making the move mid here would be a big step for them because they've got a timer on them. Gragas is pushing bottom with teleport. They have the teleport advantage, TSM that is. And Dyrus is pushing slowly but surely against these super minions. Yeah, Dyrus is good at pushing minions. 25 minutes on the clock. Looking at a thousand gold lead. It might be the trigger for this fight as Meteos takes some damage there. 4-1, to one, looking to be increased here by Team Solo Mid as they are pushing up with the aggression in mind. Two minutes on Dragon. Not even a thought for these yeah. teams just yet. TSM, very good map control here. Getting more and more ground gained bottom. They might be rewarded with that bottom turret here. And some Global Gold for no answer of Cloud9. Because they definitely have control of mid as well. Strong poke. That'll be very good for Cloud9 to be moving out of their base a bit more. They'll also be able to funnel TSM into the mid lane with the knowledge that TSM can get that free inhib if they put enough pressure on it. Can the fight from Cloud9 be strong enough? Do they have Baron before they go back for that inhibitor? Well, Let's see. inhibitor does respawn for Cloud9 yeah. first. So that means maybe we have another minute. Whoa! <laughs> uh, minute. Be so he's going to stay in there for the local. Does he get it? Ooh, close. Don't think he got it. Nope. Just out of range there. That's a, it's a little bit shorter than you would think. It's hard to judge the range. you got to get used to it. But again, remember to stay close to the turrets as they die. Yeah. There's gold under them, thar turrets, Riv. Mm. <laughs> Elimination trying to get a pick here. Oh, good play. Meteos taking a bit of extra uh, Baron damage there as the wards are starting to get sweeped out or swept. If you will. This time, it's Cloud9 going with the split push. Ball's teleport came back up. They need him at the beginning of a fight, though. They can't afford to have him come in late to a fight. Mundo's the type of tank that you need from the very beginning. Whoa, Lemon starts fighting already, though. He's getting hit by Turtle on the side. Throwing out alts willy-nilly, but it looks like the fight will continue with this chaos happening. Does not want to take that Lee Syndrome in. Oh, he does! Whoa! He got Kicks sneaky. Back. sneaky! Amazing! Bringing him a little bit of the EU love over. That's the first time we've really seen him go for a kick. But it doesn't look like it's going to be everything they wanted just yet. A nice playback from high. Yeah, Turtle.
Rumble's gonna be able to get that one, and the Wolves give him a little bit of help here. Lemon Nation being pushed around by Dyrus, and Sneaky finds himself on the wrong end of Amazing's foot. Yeah, he does survive the fight, but they get all three main members. No jungler, no solo laners. That means a Baron for TSM. Everybody's been waiting for that. It's been a while since we've seen Amazing be that Lee Sin initiation for Team Solo mid when they're just looking for it. He took it deep into the fight, deep into Cloud9's territory. And TSM come out with Baron at 27 Well, they ping on Dragon as well. They want to take everything off this map. So, Balls did teleport in. He got into the middle of the fight, but Lemon was on the side, getting a lot of heat from both Turtle and Amazing. Look at this, his mind telling land. him yes. It's the last <laughs> second of the Q, too. And then he flashed Flash! before it even hits. He flashed before the Q execution damage even hit, just to make sure that he would get it in time. And then TSM just cleaned up. That was all that they needed. Be by taking Sneaky out of the fight, they took so much of Cloud9's damage away. And since Lemon had gotten chunked early, yeah. he wasn't in a position to set up that knockup for High that they were looking for. And High didn't, wasn't able to charge up his own, so Cloud9's team fight fell apart there with the disjointed engage. This is exactly what you'll see as well as a result of top tier teams facing each other. Even though Cloud9 just got pretty much handled in that fight, they make sure to get back as quick as possible, at least grab mid. It's a bit of an opening for them to now move in the jungle, but they have zero forward wards to work with. Everything is breadcrumb defense for them. that They're just kind of walking over and making sure it's still covered by them. Cleaning up everything they can. Their, their side of the map is completely depleted. So they're kind of just waiting for TSM to make a return visit. Well, TSM now, just that one team fight is really all that they need. Yeah. They've got Turtle 3 item Tristana, the main three DPS items, hasn't had to even get lifesteal yet because there's so much focus on the front line. Turtle's free to fire away from the back. See if they just give up this inhibitor for a split pushing Meteos. He's gonna meet up with Dyra soon. That'll be a back. In eight seconds on that, he definitely has time to get out. We'll see where TSM funnels here. They'll probably follow Dyrus to the top lane or with Baron being down, they at least have to get a double split push going and feed these side lanes into the middle, uh -oh. into the inhibitors. If they hit Sneaky with a Syndra stun to start this up. All right, they don't hit Sneaky with it. Almost. Almost. Very reminiscent of the Elise Thresh play that they would do. We remember Bjergsen from All Chat saying, keep trying that, the cocoon and then the hook. We'll eventually get somebody. Yeah, just keep throwing them out. <laughs> Yasuo or, does not have teleport, by the way, so they're giving up this out yeah, for it. Yeah, right. Good call. He is far from home right now. This is going to be the four of Cloud9 trying to hold strong inside the base. Yasuo, not the biggest one to be the Siege clear, so they're not losing out on too much. But if the fight goes down, they do need his potential damage. I don't know. It looks so bad for Cloud9. Double Zanya's completed for TSM. Right. The three item Trist. So many answers here. Baron buff going to be enough to push in for another inhibitor turret. He's on Nexus turrets. He's going to be going hard. Looks like he has a siege minion with him. It's going to be... The back. He's got 20 seconds before another section of minions spawn uh, on that Nexus, but he's going to be back off. off. Yeah. So with that teleport being up, Balls is down. Imagine if Balls was up, they'd have two people inside of TSM's base. So TSM had that window to play with, and they worked it great. Yep. Great job utilizing the teleport. That was Cloud9's really only play there. They knew they can't take the straight five-on-five five fight. Mm -hmm. So they at least go yep. for the gambit, trying to get Nexus turrets down. And they get a teleport for their troubles. Not exactly what they would have wanted, especially since Dyrus was able to teleport to a turret for yep. the reduced cooldown. And how about a third Zanyas? Just right. finished as there well. You go. All the way down the board. We've had a, we've had a day of Banshee's Veils. Now we'll get a day of Zanyas to come in here. Just need two more on the team. I don't think we're going to get one out of Triss, but it wouldn't help. Oh, it wouldn't hurt, rather. wouldn't hurt at all. Now he's going lifesteal first here. <laughs> all offensive <laughs> items for Turtle. Maybe he'll make it semi-defensive and make it a Bloodthirster. I don't think so. Just They're too far ahead. It's Wild Turtle. He's already got a shell on. He's yeah. fine. I mean, the blade is what you really want when you're taking down a frontline Mundo, so yeah. he might just opt for that. Eat him right up with that percent damage. All of TSM now congregating in the bottom lane for a bit of a barbecue party on the second tier turret here. Dyrus getting that Drunken Rage charge on, so they get some extra shots on the turret even before the wave is. 
High coming in Ready for, for a possible flank here. At this point, Cloud9 are feeling pretty desperate. So they might just force a fight, even if it doesn't look good mm -hmm. initially. Really, it's pretty much all up to Lemon. If Lemon gets a god hook onto Turtle, then Cloud9 might be able to turn it around. Turtle's been keeping himself very safe. Hide behind Dyrus. You can see him shadowing yeah. every member on his team. The big man! He'll take that hook. He'll take a lot of damage and go out happy. A little below half health. Sneaky move on. from High to charge up his Q and try and come in to set up his own stun. Yeah. But TSM back off in time. There is an exposed inhibitor up top too, so TSM don't have to play with this bottom turret. They don't have to play this dangerous of a game, fighting under a turret. They have easy yeah. open inhibitors to go after if they want to force a fight. Looks like they're going to go ahead and back. Dyrus's TP is also down, so they want to get this cleared up, and then they can spread Cloud9 thin. Once they get back up to the inhibitors, it's going to be, like you said, an easy push through to that top. See what they can do if they even need to go for the bottom inhibitor. You have a minute on the Baron. Well, we can see uh, this time around TSM picking similar champions to what they got yesterday when they are mm -hmm. talked about getting whatever they want. This is this was probably the same game plan as they had yesterday. It worked out even better this time around because Cloud9 picking the Mundo susceptible to early dives straight into this combo of Gragas and Lee Sin, who can go for that execute early. And it's been pretty much all TSM. Really, though, that one mid, yeah. mid fight turned around for everything. So Another thing TSM does really TSM. well when they're in the lead is they don't allow kills with the pressure that they have. They play it safe. They've been gathering so many objectives around the map, and they've only died once. Yeah, Dyrus talked about he felt a little bad that TSM was playing kind of slow recently. And, you know, that's how you find consistency against the lower te uh, teams in the LCS. Yeah. However, this game, uh, with that lead, you're right, they have been playing it a little bit slower as well. But, man, do they have a good handle on it. Complete ward coverage around Baron for Baron attempt number two. They will force the face check into Syndra. That's never something you want to do. But Balls is definitely the man to do it. How do you coordinate around three Zanyas? The focus for Cloud9 in this fight is oh, imperative Gragas. right the now. Ulti. Oh! Oh, snuck just out. Bjergsen and hits the ultimate. Oh my gosh, he gets out with a sliver of health by the skin of his teeth. He is trying to heal himself back up off race. The fight is still going on on the other side of the screen, though. We got one Sneaky going got down. Bjergsen. Sneaky comes in for his own retribution kill. And it looks like he may be going down in the end. The Quadra for Wild Turtle. That was happening the entire time. Ooh. Even with Bjergsen coming up a tiny bit short, on the sneaky kill, TSM still come out way ahead. So yes, it was a miraculous survival there for Sneaky for a bit. And he did get to actually turn it around and kill Bjergsen, but the rest of the team's getting killed while they don't have Sneaky in the fight. So even though he didn't kill him, took him out of the fight, and the rest of TSM able to bully here. High gets destroyed. Yasuo shut down so effectively by that exhaust. And even though Balls is fairly tanky, as he said, Turtle's way too strong right now, and he's the perfect carry to take down a mid-game Mundo. Easily eats him up. Whew. Kited him out right there as well. Very nicely played. Only one Zanya's forced to be used in that one. So you can see how much control TSM had over that fight. Didn't even feel like they needed to use their defensive spells. Bjergsen probably, probably needed to. <laughs> Since he went down, Sneaky came in came in from the back and assassinated him. Let's see if I can actually pull something off here. Cloud9, after that last fight, maybe they'll start going for some uh, bush attempts with multiple people. Or maybe High just wants the one versus one. I like it. Let's see if he can get a good uh, win Bjergsen ball. wants the two versus one, though. Glebe heading his way down bottom. Can they stop the back? They got no a warden for safety to make sure nothing else is coming their way. High is going to clear it out and go back. Looking very, very scary for Cloud9 here. TSM regrouping. They have about two and a half more minutes on that Baron buff to be working with. That should be plenty of time for both inhibitors. And honestly, at that point, all they have to do is wait around in the base. 
with the super minions and wait for them to arrive because Tristana, level 18 now, max range over 700, can just stay safe and fire from the back line oh. while super minions do their work. So all TSM have to do is stay in this base. Man, I'm sure Balls would love that thorn mail right now, but he's still facing so much ability power on the team. Dyrus has gone that full AP. Even the Lich Bane's gonna come in as a fourth item, maybe. And still has the Spectre Cowl. Turtle did get the semi-defensive item there, going Bloodthirster. So he, yeah, he's he did. got the extra shield. That's the second time well. we've actually seen the Bloodthirster caught out. out. He as well chooses to go for the Alacrity Boots to keep himself speedy and safe. And TSM is just going to continue to take more very methodical and strategically planned out game by them. I guess it seems so like they got all the picks that they want coming out this time. They have such a solid squad here. They can yeah. eat. Whoa, what? The, the God Hook, we were <laughs> wondering if that would come in. Face so palm got it. by Wild Turtle. He is now wow. watching his team run away. This Baron could be not even put to use. On to Glee. He gets the shield down, but he's not going to be locked oh. up too much. The last attack's going to come in. He's going to be able to run from that, but the team picks it up as get more? well. He's got a Cloud oh. now trying to move this one out. A good scout of the week coming in from Bjerg City. Flat. Ooh. Ooh. That. A nice try. They are still really going for this. They can push down to the inhibitor, so they're not running into death. They're running into TSM, regrouping. Bjergsen's out of mana. He is not wow. rocking home guards either, so Bjergsen's not going to come flying back into this. Drops one barrel here. Now, they should get this inhibitor, uh, five versus three. Oh, I, don't, I don't know if that will be enough to get them back in the game. Oh, they want to end the game? No, they can't. Seconds? They can't end the game. This would be over for them if they try oh. to end it. This, Bjergsen did have enough time to get that mana back as he sat in the fountain. You can see he's only at half, but he can still output the damage. A Nexus turret goes down as Cloud9 answers across the map. Ooh, wow. They get out, though. Can't amazing. Oh, he's in range. <laughs> so close. Balls trying yeah. to hold the turrets. He should be all right. He's going to have minions spawn right now. Oh, no. So they're going to be waved out. Everybody. Oh, my gosh. Flow goes down. He's going to have one Q, two Q. That's Bjergsen. Balls has already lost one turret. The minions aren't enough to stop the supers. TSM is going to be coming down the trash. Oh, God, I got too desperate there. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Four. Oh, no. Sneaky actually was going to walk by. Sneaky says, I'm out. He's actually <laughs> going to kill Lemon Nation in that situation. Here comes the rest of the team. The cavalry has arrived for Team Solo Mid. They're about to instill some true Bay life on this game. Looking for the Nexus. The one oh, the turtle. last shot for Turtle makes up for the last mistake. 10 1 and 2 on the game. 40 minutes in. 16 to 5. TSM takes down Cloud 9. A little scary there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a little bit. Surprise twist at the end. With the hook onto Turtle. Oh, that we never, never even got to see how that came about. But That's how fast it was. Lemon Nation just letting you know that he still has it. Cloud9 do get desperate though. They wanted to end the game yeah. right there. They knew that it would be such a long, long path for them to get back in the game. They just went for the immediate end, and it definitely bites them in the butt. What could have been if they got out with the Nexus turret <laughs> down? Oh my gosh, it would have been so riveting. That would have been so much pressure on the Nexus that somebody would have had to control. So much more map control, but it, it will not happen this time. Wild Turtle comes out strong after a quick back and forth he had to take home and a really great base rush hold by Team Solo Mid as they did what they could with little to nothing. Bjergsen recharging half of his mana bar to come out and fight for that last one as TSM, or rather as Cloud9, wanted that Nexus turret so bad. Man, you have to give props to Amazing this game as well. Uh, the plays up top for them to actually successfully execute the dives onto Mundo. Right. And the kick that won them that mid-game fight on Sneaky. When were we going to see it? That was kind of my question. How many times were the LCS big plays <laughs> initiating, initiating fight-winning games? Mm -hmm. As soon as he goes in, they'd be through inhibitor turrets, past an entire team. Maybe, and this is just coming from me, obviously not Team Solomon, maybe it was just, you know, our all-in initiation isn't something we want. We'll use that Gragas, pick somebody out, peel them in, and take them out. That time, he just hit it.
he just hit it, and it worked beautifully. Actually, all stages in the game. Early game with the dives, mid game with the team fight, and then late game, he stopped all the backs. He killed Medios and he killed yeah. Erickson. Really big plays. TSM in those super tight situations usually make very good calls. We've seen.